Do you like martial art movies? All the crazy moves, kicks, punches, blocks and the death defying stun. So if you love martial art movies, here are 10 underrated martial art films from around the world. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like and share button. Many consider it the first martial arts feature film from Germany. Not sure if it is true, but I enjoyed watching this film a few years back. In 2002, a short film named Come From Saga 2 was released and later developed into a feature film by the same team, which includes some of the cast members and the director. However, there is no connection between the two films. The film got released in 2005 under the title Come From Saga. There, Lester Schuler. The English title of the film was called The Challenge. The fight choreography is brilliant without any CGI or wire work. There is a little towards the end but not too much. The story is set in a post-apocalyptic world with a simple plot and has fair performances by its cast. It may not be a martial arts classic but it introduced German martial art talents such as Matisse, Lantwer, Volkram, Zies and Mike Moller to the global audience. Before The Raid Redemption and The Raid 2, Murantao introduced the deadly combo of director Gareth Evans and martial art actors Iko Uwais and Yayan Ruhian. After watching Murantao, I knew it was just a matter of time before Iko Uwais and Yayan Ruhian became martial art icons, and I'm glad they didn't prove me wrong. This film has some Hong Kong style action scenes without any CGI, something I love to watch. The climax fight is unforgettable as the good guy fights against two bad guys, something Gareth Evans reversed in the raid. The film also introduced Lohan Buzon, another great martial artist, but sadly, he didn't get the exposure he deserved. Finally, a lesser known director from Welsh named Gareth Evans showed potential to become one of the biggest action directors and he doesn't disappoint either. Morantau is a must watch if you haven't seen it yet. It all started with Maranta when I saw Loho Bizo for the first time and after some research on the internet, I discovered the Z Team, a group of talented yet highly underrated martial artists and actors who used to make short films on YouTube and some of them were even better than any major Hollywood release. It took a long time for them to finally come out with a full length feature, Die Fighting, which had a different title earlier, The Prize of Success. The film did not get a widespread release, commercial success or critical appreciation, but it's unquestionable one of the best martial art films from an independent production on a micro budget. The film pays tribute to old school kung fu movies like a Fist of Furyish, Dojo Fight, Jackie Chan's Drunken Boxing and a spectacular climax fight which will give you an adrenaline rush. Fabian Garcia wrote, directed and choreographed the fights in this film. He is one of those exquisite talents ignored by the big studios. Die Fighting is one of the must watch martial art films. Marco Zarur is a name that needs no introduction in the world of martial arts cinema and Redeemer is one of his best works to date after Undisputed 3. The film marks the fourth collaboration between Marco Zarur and director Ernesto Dia Espinosa who have recently released their fifth collaboration after the duo worked on films like Mandrill, Rajman and Kiltro. Redeemer showcases Zarur's fighting skill to the full extent, choreographed by none other than Zarur himself, which includes a mix of traditional martial arts and MMA. The film's climax fight is one of the main highlights, which stands out from all the other brilliant fight scenes in this film. It is arguably one of the most underrated martial art films of all time. Fighter may not be a high octane action film on this list, but it is a story about martial arts and women empowerment. It is one of my favorite films because there are only a few female oriented martial art films. Fighter is a relationship drama with some well choreographed fights. The film is about a high school girl from a conservative Turkish family whose parents want her to become a doctor, but her only passion is martial arts. The film deals with the consequences and the conflicts that unfold due to her passion. Sadly, neither director Desha Arthi or debutant actress Samara Turan got the widespread recognition they deserved. The latter hasn't worked in a film to date. Fighter may not be a penultimate martial arts movie, but it is a hidden gem. Despite low ratings on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, The King of Streets is a pretty intriguing action film that boasts of mainland China's first street fighting film. Unlike traditional Chinese films, this one doesn't use a lot of wires and cables. The fight scenes are impressive with plenty of full contact fights and nice choreography. 
Of course, you have to ignore a few aspects like the acting and the film's direction. But if you love to watch films with some kick-ass action, The King of Streets is worth watching. Actor and co-director Yves Saint does an impressive job in his debut film displaying some great fighting skill, if not in the direction. The Rebel is undoubtedly another highly underrated martial art film of our time. Remember that guy from Tom Yum Gong fighting against Tony Jaa in the restaurant fight scene? Well, Vietnamese martial artist and actor Johnny Wen has been around for quite some time. He was Tobey Maguire's Thunderbolt in the first two Spider-Man films. The Rebel is his best film to date and it is a real shame that the film never received a cult following like other South Asian films such as Tom Yum Gong. The film is written, directed and edited by Johnny's brother Charlie Wen. Set in a periodic backdrop, the film features some of the best martial art fight scenes that you'll ever see. The film also features Vietnamese sensation Veronica No and action star Dustin Nguyen. So if you are looking for a breathtaking martial arts film, then do check it out. To the name can Tuga, Dennis Rule, Vlad Rimberg, Sam Hargrave and Emmanuel Manzanares bring any bell to you? If it doesn't, then you are missing out on some quality martial arts stuff in the indie circle. And some of them are now either directing big Hollywood projects or doing fight choreography for big films. Unlucky Stars is an independent martial art film that pays great tribute to the Hong Kong action films of the 80s and the 90s. It took ages for the film to get a release, which is understandable due to various financial and production constraints. Unlucky Stars is one of the best martial art movies that have come out of the United States in the last decade. Check out this brilliant movie available for free on their website unluckystarsthemovie.com. I'll put the link in the description. This Philip Ng starter action vehicle with fight choreography by legendary Sammo Hung will remind you of the good old Bruce Lee films. Philip Ng's fighting style will make you feel like Bruce Lee is still alive and kicking. The film has some nice visual, vibrant costumes and a grandeur production design, which makes it even more interesting to watch. Add a few punches and kicks, some Sammo Hung magic and Andy on in the mix and you get yourself one of the most entertaining and action-packed films from Hong Kong in modern times. Well, most of the films on this list are independent production without any big studio involvement. Once Upon a Time in Shanghai is not exactly an independent film, but it is still very underrated. The only movie on this list that came out in the 90s and arguably a criminally underrated film. Almost everyone associated with the film has vanished in thin air. Sixteen Samurai is like Mad Max meets Kung Fu meets Blues Brother. The film has some excellent fight scenes and some great music too. Hell, even a guitar battle in the end. Jeffrey Falcon starred in a few Hong Kong films before Six String Samurai, his first and only leading role in his entire film career. He also produced and wrote the screenplay for this film with director Lance Munchia. Falcon has not appeared in a single film since Six String Samurai and very little is known about his whereabouts. Brian Tyler composed the music for this film along with the Red Elvises. Christian Bernier deserves a special mention for his ecstatic cinematography. This movie is for a selective audience who loves to watch distinctive or experimental movies or if you are in the mood to catch some dystopian samurai kung fu rock and roll cocktail, Six String Samurai is worth watching by all means. So what is the most underrated martial art film that you have seen which is not very popular? Please mention the names in the comment and until next time, take care.